Oh, hi. I'm demographer Carl Haupe, Population Reference Bureau, and this is the second in a series we're doing on a, a series we call uh, Distill Demographics. And you know, I've been been answering questions on the phone, talking with people, uh, learning sometimes as much from them as they do from me, for about 30 years now, although it doesn't exactly seem like that. And it's been a very interesting sort of an experience because you come to know what people are thinking, what they'd like to know, how they interpret things that they see, that they read in newspapers or magazines or in television, you know, about demography, about demographics. And, you know, it can be confusing sometimes. There's no doubt about that, that uh, one can write something in an article and not quite get it right, but not quite uh, really realize that. And some of these things get to be rather, uh, oh, you know, rather common. We see them quite often in the press. And I, I like to call these population myths. A myth is something that uh, someone will write about, perhaps by accident, uh, and it becomes kind of ingrained in what we think today about what we observe in the world. This magazine I was reading is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it's a 1963 edition of U.S. News and World Report. Uh, how I've been able to hang on to this for that long totally amazes me, but I did. And look what one of the cover stories is. This is back in 1963, in September. Too many people in the world, their question is asked here. Too many people? Back in 1963? Uh, there's been a lot of criticism about people who kind of raised an alarm about uh, global population growth back in the 60s. Certainly, uh, Paul Ehrlich has been a lightning rod for criticism. Uh, he published his book uh, that really popularized the issue, I think, in 1968, The Population Bomb. But let's take a look at what happened in the last century. We entered that century with a world population of 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion. At the end of the century, those two numbers had just changed places to 6.1 billion. Now, I think something happened in the 20th century. And what did happen was that, you know, we had been, you know, really, we had been very concerned then, not so much about population growth, but about famines and disease in developing countries. That was our, our really our main issue. And it was only sometime in the 60s that we began to realize the death rates in developing countries were falling at a fairly rapid rate, but the birth rate was not falling, and population growth took off. And that's how we had that 1.6 billion grow to 6.1. So I would say really that, uh, you know, that was, how long ago was that that they said this? That was half a century ago. And yet people are still <laughs> bringing up the fact that we did not have any concern about population growth. And I think the, the figures have certainly shown that that is not true. And uh, you know, why did the birth rates are com coming down, but why is that? Was it because the, the first world, uh, as we called it then, tried to impose a population policy on what we then called the third world? No, it wasn't. The third world countries we now call developing, they were the ones who took up the baton first. India was the, had the first population policy in 1952. So what we had was a realization on the part of the developing world that growth was simply too fast. Were they right back in those days? You be the judge. Now let's take a look at myth number two. Myth number two is that world population is not growing. That in fact our problem is low birth rates, not high birth rates. Well, a few facts. It took us 12 years to grow from 5 billion to 6 billion, which we reached in 1999. Guess how many years it might take us to go from 6 to 7? Okay, 12 years. You saw that one coming. So if we are adding a billion people every 12 years, I'm going to come down on the side of the fact that world population is still growing. So that's the end of that myth. Now, how about low birth rates being the world's problem and not high birth rates? 
Low birth rates are a problem in Europe, certainly. They're a problem in Japan, uh, South Korea, and other industrialized countries. And that is certainly the case. But let's take a look at a country like uh, Uganda in Africa. You know, one of my favorite expressions is, because I think half the time we use it, we don't really know what we mean, is that if present trends continue, and we project ahead that Uganda's population will be such and such in the year 2050. But in the case of Uganda, fertility is not coming down. So the present trend would mean stable fertility, that the birth rate doesn't change. And look what happens to Uganda uh, when that, when that, if that were to take place. Uganda would grow to about 158 some million people uh, in only 40 years. Now, we don't expect that to happen, but still, if present trends continue, that would happen in that country. Uh, and another, another thing is we often use projections, say, from the United Nations or another organization. We use the word will, uh, that our global population will be nine point something billion in the year 2050. And what we forget is that there's more than one projection, and the United Nations is quite careful to point that out that when looking at a particular country or the world or a region, we should look at all three projections, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, notice that by 2050, world population could vary from just below 8 billion all the way up to almost 10 and a half billion. That's in only 40 years. Uh, that's a big variation. So first of all, we know that population is growing, it certainly is, uh, and low birth rates are a problem but only in industrialized countries, at least at the moment. Now, there's another myth, the third myth, uh, that we can address today that's been going, going around, is that by mid-century, by 2050, that over half of Europe's population will be Muslim. And this, well, let's see, it's, it's not true. How about that? That would certainly, I think, dispel most myths. Uh, if we look at uh, Europe today, 5% of Europe's population is Muslim. Uh, the two countries in Europe that have the highest percentages are France and Germany, with about 6 and 5. Uh, Russia, because of its heritage as the old Soviet Union, of course, has uh, a higher percentage because they have you know, autonomous republics within the Soviet Union who, in fact, are Muslim. Uh, so it really is not in the cards at all. In fact, it's a little bit ludicrous to think that uh, Europe could be half Muslim by 2050. An ally to that is this belief that some people seem to have that Muslims worldwide have enormous families, and simply not true. That Turkey, for example, which is one country that has sent many immigrants to, uh, to Europe and is a prospective member of the European Union, women average about two children each. And the same goes for Tunisia and for many other countries of North Africa where many of the immigrants come from. So from here you get just the facts. You know, as I said before, the demography, demographics, you know, it can be a somewhat complicated and confusing subject. And, you know, you, you can write something that is really pretty far off base without meaning, any, meaning it at all. Sometimes people, in fact, however, they do uh, use numbers to push their own point of view. But if you call us here, we'll tell you straight, at least as best as we know.